Well, guys, about a month ago, I got a package from Dan Hansen in uh, Denmark. And this is the company he works for. You guys remember the package? I did a, a package opening. He actually sent me several top locks. One of them was a DOM, which is the top of the line DOM. It was the easiest lock in the box to open. Um, these three are a different story. These are a brand called HS. They're made by that company. He asked me to really give it my best try. Two of these are stock, these two, and then one of them is actually a challenge lock from, and I always mess this up. I'm going to try it the Italian pronunciation, B. Yarnis. How about that? Anyway, um, I struggled with this for about 10 days. We gave it a little bit every evening. I got nothing on this lock. No false set, very little uh, feedback whatsoever. Take a look at this keyway, and I think you'll start to understand why. Try to imagine how you would get up inside of that squiggly line keyway and pick uh, a pin that is a high cut hiding behind a low cut. And I struggled with that for 10 days. I got nothing. It's a six pinner. Um, and if you look closely on the bottom right, you can even see, see if I get the flashlight down inside of there, you can see some sidebars as well. I didn't even get that far. I was so convinced that B. Yadonis was messing with my head that he put steel rods in there as a practical joke that I unmummied the key. And, of course, stuck it in there and... It works. Once you manage to get it in there, it works beautifully in every direction. So it is clearly not a practical joke. Well, when I unwrapped it, of course, I get a look at the bidding. And now I see why I couldn't get some of those really deep cut ones in the very back. And to make it worse, there's your sidebars. You have to deal with those as well. So total failure. These other guys, these are identical. These are all HS locks, all with what apparently is a proprietary paracentric keyway. They all have sidebars in them. You can see if you look down with a flashlight. These are keyed differently. I haven't actually seen the keys, but you can kind of tell what the bidding is like through the shrink wrap. See what you're looking at there. This one's probably looks like the steps coming down off of Mount Vesuvius. Just awesome. But uh, I, didn't, I, I tried a week on that one. And then I gave up and I get tried a week on this one. So I think the bottom line here is if you have HS locks on your front door, don't worry about the security of your door. Worry about the security of your windows. Anyway, let's take a look. I figure that I, I'm going to take the, all of these locks and send them to uh, Chess Guy 125. He has that. He's the most gifted picker I think I know. If he, anybody has a chance in heck of getting these open, it will be him. In the meantime, we're going to have to settle for finding out what is inside of this one. I'm going to do that. When I send these to Chess Guy, I'm going to send all of them to him. I'm also going to send him these Skipper's Pipes. Very high demand for these things. A lot of you guys are very excited to see these. I apparently will never, I will never taste one, sadly. I'm going to send these to Chess Guy as well. Um, let's go ahead and gut this guy and take a look. Let's just go after this one. Move all that out of the way. Take my tray from Steven Zellis. And let's pull this thing apart. I want to get a look at the sidebars and the side or the side pins and see if they interact with that sidebar. I did try to pick them. I didn't detect anything, but normally you wouldn't, I don't think, until you get those top six pins picked and get a little bit of what I believe would probably be a false set. I don't think you're going to have any feedback at all from those from the uh, sidebars or side pins, but you can definitely feel it. It's definitely got a sidebar in there. All right, so I'm going to turn it like so. I believe the sidebar is going to be 90 degrees, just like it is on most other locks of this type. And that ought to do it. Yeah, we can even see a groove here for the sidebar to fit into. Let's see what we got. Let's make sure we don't screw this up. Okay, there's your, there's your sidebar. There's your anti-drill pin to prevent you from drilling out that sidebar. There's an anti-drill carbide insert to prevent you from drilling out the pins on top. HS takes security very seriously. That was an anti-drill wafer. Oh, no, it wasn't. I thought it was a wafer. This, oh, goodness. No wonder I wasn't getting anything. This is an ASA pin. Um, I don't know where he came out of. Probably, probably chamber one. We're going to put him in chamber one for now. 
and we'll come back and take a look at him. Uh, the sidebars will not pop out until I pull the key out, but there is what the top looks like. Let's dump these guys first. I am going to take this sidebar out so I don't have to worry about him. And there's what the sidebar looks like. It's intact, of course. And we got two tiny little springs here. Trying to figure out how those interact. We'll figure it out in a minute. I am going to take those. Let me find a very fine set of tweezers here real quick. I can find those little devils. And I'm going to take these springs out so we don't lose them. Almost have to be a watchmaker. This thing has got such precision in it. All right, let's see what we got. Pin number one. Standard. We have a torpedo. We have a standard. Standard. We have another torpedo. And number six is a standard. Okay, we are seeing some threadings here. The chambers are threaded in two, four, and six. I believe these three pins here are anti-drills. I don't think those are active in any way. All right, I do not know what's going to happen here. I'm going to put my thumb on top of this and extract the key until I feel something hit it. And there we go. There's the first one popping up. So it looks like they are spring-loaded, but not with a powerful spring. Very delicate. Okay, so that was number five. Put him right there. There's your tiny little hair-like spring. Four. Try. Dos. And you're done. And I've got nothing else inside of here. Very, very fine machine work on this thing. These are definitely anti-drill. These are carbide insert uh, to prevent drilling from the side. So you can't drill out the sidebars, which were located right in there, and interacted with these guys over here. Unbelievable. Very, very, very nice. All right, let's take a look at the top. Uh, I think number one already fell out. Let me get another pair of tweezers, and we'll take a look at that guy. Okay. It wasn't one, so there's one. He also is an Asa, probably the shortest one I have ever seen. Looks like he got squished by a truck. Number two. I don't even know what that, that really looks like an Abus spool with a T-pin on both ends. Um, looks like we got some difference in springs too. So number two is a longer spring. And that would change the difference in feedback. Not that I was able to detect heck of a lot of feedback. And then number one looks like he might even be smaller. He doesn't even want to come out. It's a hair-like spring. Very fine steel spring. I can see chamber two is threaded already. All right, number three. Another one of these squished ASA pins. And it's gotta be another short spring. He's not coming out, guys. There he is. Whoops. There we go, number three. Number four is a very tall big brother, Asa. I don't feel bad at all now. Another one of these Avis double T's with a spool. And let's see, one, two, three, four. We got one more in here, should be. Uh, I'm looking at a taller spring there, I think. He's not coming out. Let's try from the other side. Take number six out. 
Okay, number six is missing the pin, so he obviously was this ASA pin in number six, and a long copper spring, and then the last one, the spring should come out. There he is. Okay, I am missing one spring. There he is. He's just starting to come out of there. So it's another one of these little very light steel. All right, guys, there's what you're looking at. We have the groove down the side here for the sidebar. So if you don't pick the if you pick the upper pins but not the side the uh, sliders, you are not getting in this lock. So it's two locks built into a single one. Very heavy manufactured, very heavy duty steel. Here's what you're looking like on the inside. Let me straighten this up a little bit so you can appreciate a little bit better. There's that cat hair. Finally, I planned that exactly that way. These little steel springs are really light, almost like they're aluminum. All right, here's what we're looking at. Let me turn this vertically so you can get a little bit better shot. A torpedo, number two, a torpedo in number four. All the rest are standard lower key pins. Upstairs, we have three assas, which by themselves are usually really difficult to pick, but when they're in threaded chambers, it makes it, well, almost impossible. And then we had two of what I believe are the Abus uh, spools with the T-pins on both ends. We had varying levels of, of spring tension on the keys or on the pins to kind of screw me up worse than I'm already screwed up. I got that PTSD. I can't believe you guys are doing this to me. Anyway, upstairs, we had the side pins. We had five side pins you had to deal with locking into a sidebar. And, of course, there are the two springs that held him into place. If you could not pick these six then you were never going to get a chance to pick those five. You have to pick them in sequence, one or the other. In other words, you have to pick the bottom before you can pick the side pins, or if you reverse the tension on the core, you pick the sliders first, and then you pick the upper pins. I had no luck either way. So, fellas, if, you're looking for, if you live in Denmark and you're looking for a lock, this probably would be an excellent choice. Don't worry about your door, man. Worry about your windows. Thanks for your time. Stay safe. Stay legal. Dan, thanks for the skipper's pipes. And thanks for all the locks, man. Sorry I couldn't open them.